Hello and welcome to the Business Channel. In this programme, we bring business viewers up to speed on the value that facilities management, or FM, can create in the workplace, how it can free up organisations to focus on their core strengths, and we look at the impact it can make on performance. We'll be speaking to key players, including the leading independent catering group, CH & Co, the international software technologies company serving the FM industry, FSI, Specialists in the design, build, optimization and ongoing management of data centres key source, the UK's top winter risk management specialist, Gritit, providing gritting and snow clearance, and Altius, the specialist independent vendor assessment company. The best way to describe FM is it's the biggest hidden industry in the UK. Imagine your journey to work on a daily basis. Nearly every part of your journey is affected by the FM industry. Now, you may find that difficult to believe, but think about your journey, the traffic lights, car parking, trains, infrastructure. You get to your office, the door opens, it's clean, the lighting works, the food you eat for breakfast is very good, the security guards friendly reception, the air conditioning's working, it's all taken for granted until something goes wrong. That's when you discover what the FM industry is. FM really brings huge value when you're making efficiency and improving performance. We can look at how our services are run to the business strategy, making sure that we run efficiently with where the business wants to go to. By bringing your FM into a line, you can be looking at 20 or 30% savings the first time you go through this process and really bring innovation to the business, really bringing best practice back into the business and that's really where BIFM can help with your staff as well. With the increased requirements for value, things have really improved over the years. Organisations like ourselves. BIFM, Facilities Management Association, and the real growth in the service sector industry has really professionalised it. So obviously there's qualifications now, there's experience, and people are really seeing the potential of FM moving forward. An army marches on its stomach, as Napoleon once said. A workforce has to be fed. So let's start with CH & Co, also known as Charlton House, the catering group which recently won a prestigious Katie Award for its Wellbeing Being Well initiative. I spoke to the CEO, Caroline Fry, and nutritionist Amanda Ursel, who consults for the company. But first I started by asking Caroline, how can FMs make sure that they get value for money from a catering partner. There's good value for the clients and there's good value for the customers and they need to make sure that that meets in the middle. Um, clients will be looking for the best they can from the money that they're spending for the subsidy, if there is a subsidy, and the customers will be looking at the best value they can from the money that they're handing over the counter. What makes us really special is the healthy eating part of our, our offer. I think it's invaluable in, in today's lifestyle that people eat well at work. What should FMs look for in a catering company? A lot of people are looking for the best cultural fit. I think a lot of caterers will do good food, but it's whether they can work with those people. I think also that you need to have a company that's very honest, someone that can tell you what you really need to have in your catering offer and not tell you what you want to hear, but really advise you on what you should and shouldn't be, be looking for. Now, what are the key steps that an FM should go through when they're putting a catering contract out to tender? It used to be very much a great big tender document at the beginning and then you get to meet the teams later on and it's really turned on its head that now they do a very quick pre-qualification questionnaire and then they come out to site and see the team, see the food and actually see whether what they see on the plate and the people they meet will really fit with what they want for their offer. So how can FMs check the competence of their suppliers and how much due diligence should they do around this? I think to go to trade publications or the BIFM networking um, facilities that they have, to be able to look at who's recommended. I think that's a really important way of looking at who's credible in the marketplace, who delivers on their promises, whose food speaks volumes, who has healthy eating at the forefront. You know, we have the IMS um, accreditations at Charlton House for quality, health and safety and environmental. And hopefully that shows that we have the foundations to be able to build on and that they have the confidence that we, we are okay in those areas. Now, how important do you think healthy eating is in the workplace? Because this is one of the things that sets your company apart. 
we're feeding a lot of people every day, three, five times a week. We have an obligation to feed them as healthily as we possibly can when they're with us. Some have breakfast and lunch as well. So it's always been vitally important and we have a wellbeing being well concept that um, endorses that to make sure that we are absolutely as healthy as possible. And that's low salt, low fat, fresh produce. We make commitments to make food as healthy as possible. So for example, with procurement, uh, there's been a switch to lower salt, lower sugar baked beans. There's been a commitment to have 1% fat milk throughout the company and switching to a particular type of rapeseed oil, which is higher in omega-3s. So these are things which happen across the company. And we have a wonderful website, which is a resource for people to use, which has lots and lots of information about healthy eating. But there's also the external pledges that are made. So for example, signing up to the government's responsibility deal. And we've signed up to lowering salt, for example, and uh, taking out trans fats. Now, their commitments, which were taken very seriously, and salt is an interesting one, because we took lots of chefs down to Le Manoir et Quatre Saisons, and we felt that actually hearing that message from a, a well-known chef like Raymond Blanc was very important, and of course the chefs came back and they were very inspired by that. And then the chefs went back, they taught their chefs, and this has gone down through the company now, and the result is that we've actually had a significant reduction in salt throughout the company. Now what is the business case for healthy eating, for feeding your employees healthier food? It's a very big differentiator for us. A lot of our competitors talk about healthy eating as well, but it re we really do take it extremely seriously. So for a business case for us, it helps us win new business. And for the clients, they see the benefit that it's a real motivator for their customers. And if they're fed well throughout the day with good nutritious food, they will be more productive. And they see a benefit as well that it retains staff, it helps recruit staff, and it motivates staff. So it's a, a, a win, win for them. And I think they're starting to realise that more and more. Since its inception in 1991, FSI has become a market leader in computer-aided FM, or CAFM. The firm now delivers complete integrated FM packages to the FM industry internationally. John Moriarty is the group MD and also chairman of the FMA, incidentally. I started by asking him what exactly FSI does and how it can help FMs. FSI are a technology company working predominantly in the facilities management space and real estate. There's a software technology that moves and controls people, performance and process, and will dictate profit and profitability of a company. It will be managing people and assets and the way buildings behave, and typically be moving data and collating data to allow other people to analyse. How much value do you think FM can add in terms of improving performance and productivity? It's pivotal to the way people behave, it's pivotal to how the building behaves and in terms of, uh, of, of, of its impact on a building, it probably impacts the three P's, people, process and performance in various ways. So it has a, a significant impact, how it's perceived by, by people within a building will dictate how much influence FM will have in the building. Now in terms of FSI, what kind of systems would your software be running? Our software typically is for the management of people uh, and, and activities within a building. It, it manages the three P's, as I've alluded, people, performance and process, um, and very much dictates the behaviour of um, how an asset within a building is, is managed from, from its opening of life uh, as an asset to its disposal when it's, when it's finished and completed its life. So it has a significant in influence um, and can influence profitability accepting that it's a more complex technology solution. Now, do you think that FM can be operated on one single intelligent system? There's no one single system that forms the technology platform for a, for a building. A building typically could be a building management system, could be a security system, could be an access control system, or a technology system, as in software, such as FSI. To get the best performance out of the building and the people, Converged technologies will be the way forward, where they use the data and the, the capabilities of all converged technologies to maximise the performance and the ability and the capability of the building that it serves. Now, how do you think that relationships with FM suppliers work best and how do you think that their performance should be best monitored? Single source FM suppliers will have either a one or a three year contract. They will uh, be either working towards the end client or be working to the FM provider. 
such suppliers need to work in a collaborative way either with the FM provider or the end client with the contract being output based so what's good for the end user the customer rather than what's good for the company and what's good for the client and indeed the KPI should reflect uh, a more collaborative approach where not necessarily being linked to the commercial reality of the contract but the customer reality of the contract uh, and that would provide the best form of service to its customers. And what's your biggest challenge do you think at the moment in the FM arena? Cost containment and, and the moving of technology. Technology is moving so quickly. In the last three years we've seen a, a huge sway towards mobility. The connected uh, FM, the connected facilities manager, is more prevalent. Um, people are more mobile and the biggest challenge we face is, is keeping in tune with that as a, a technology provider and being sure that we provide a service. In terms of, of the data that, that connected technologies now collect, there has seen a move of 59% annually in growth of data. Trying to analyse that and business analyse that for maximum benefits will be the biggest challenge. Computer aided facilities management systems have been around for a while and the whole point is to try and integrate as much information into one place as possible. So whether it's um, help desk systems or whether it's managing suppliers, contractors or, or whether it's even uh, personnel within the organisation, those systems are genuinely helping to bring that information together. As IP technology develops, it enables facilities managers not just to access this information at their desk, but also on their laptops, whether they're at home, or on their tablet, maybe in the car, or on their smartphone, because FMs these days very often are looking after multiple sites and a large portfolio of, of buildings. Keysource design, build and manage data centres for big multinational organisations through to SMEs. The company is structured around five service teams, consultancy, design, project management, m and &E contracting and ongoing maintenance and management. I sat down with Director Rob Elder and asked him what exactly Data Centre FM is and what a package would typically include. For different organisations it can mean different things. Uh, we work with both end user organisations where the facilities managers are both looking after perhaps a data centre as well as the more traditional FM. Um, but also we work with companies where their core business is, is running a data centre so they tend to be slightly different skill sets and slightly, slightly different responsibilities. And what would typically sit within a DCFM package? Traditionally that's been much more around service and maintenance um, and what we tend to find these days actually is that there's a much greater requirement for data centre facilities managers to deliver more ongoing performance management of the facility, improving efficiency um, and utilisation. So the role is changing and it's not just quite so service and maintenance orientated. So what is the value that DCFM can add in achieving uptime and improving performance? There's a lot of talk about downtime in the industry and what the causes of that are and it's widely recognised that the majority of outages or certainly around three quarters um, are often caused as a result of human error where perhaps people don't understand what it is they're meant to be doing, there aren't the right processes and procedures in place. We certainly encourage our customers to engage with the facilities management team very early on and in our business we even get our data and facilities management team to undertake the commissioning and the integrated system testing once a facility is built because ultimately if they're responsible for managing it through the life cycle they really do need to understand how it was set up to work. So how can DCFM improve the ways that a data centre is managed and controlled? Data centre facilities managers have to um, deliver their services in a changing environment and so really that's about improving the performance, um, providing optimisation to increase capacity and drive down power usage and improve efficiency within the data centre. And certainly our challenge as the designers as well is to make the facility simpler. Um, just because it's more complex doesn't mean it's more efficient or more resilient. If you relate that back to human error being a big part of downtime, actually we need to make these facilities simpler to run in order for them to be optimised and managed better throughout. Now do you think it's realistic to expect DCFM to lower energy use and really lower carbon emissions as well? From research that we've conducted, around 40% of um, people running these facilities, both IT and facilities, uh, recognise that they're perhaps not optimising the way that they should, yet only a third of those people have the right tools in place to monitor, uh, manage and implement the right solutions to drive down efficiency. So the challenge really is 
for those organisations to look at the right ways to do that. So we think for new facilities, the starting point is to have the right tools to enable you to do that and then be able to interpret that information to drive efficiency. But certainly we see there's a big opportunity in existing facilities to do that. And there's help for data centre facilities managers, you know, people like organisations like the Green Grid um, have established some industry recognised standards for measuring data centre efficiency, um, which is widely adopted across um, the data centre industry. So what is data centre infrastructure management and what benefits does that offer? Data centre infrastructure management software is um, probably the biggest change to come into the data centre industry since perhaps high density. Who doesn't manage their facility using some form of spreadsheet? Um, you know, that's where people feel comfortable. And I think that that's um, certainly useful for storing information and helping with planning. But in the changing environment we're working with in data centres, you need much more readily available information, which enables you to plan and proactively manage quickly. So really, the use of this type of software enables you to make faster, more informed decisions. Um, it keeps all of your asset information in one place and understands the relationships between all of that information, helping ultimately to improve on performance, um, reduce costs by improving on efficiency, enabling you to make better utilisation of the infrastructure which you have. It's really about providing one tool, one window into the facility that understands all of the relationships. I would also say there though as well that the challenge for organisations isn't just to deploy this type of software, but really actually make sure that it's kept up to date, that the information within it is relevant, and you actually use that to help make more informed and better decisions because actually that is that's actually the real challenge. With the latest innovations in terms of technology, um, computer-aided FM systems, there is no reason why um, an FM company cannot physically run the whole building using technology. But some of the building stock in the UK is quite old um, and installing the technology into listed buildings could be a bit difficult. Depending on the nature of the core business and the, and the needs, I think it's a real balance. So in terms of what's outsourced, what's maintained, where the skills are. But underlying that, I think there's a, a definite need that regardless of the size of organisation, whatever the outsourced or the FM provider provides, there must be an in-house management function to drive performance and service quality going forward. Hope for the best but prepare for the worst is the idea when deciding whether to take out a winter risk management package. Gritit provides specialist gritting, de-icing and snow clearance services to the private, not-for-profit and public sectors in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. They do over 100,000 service visits in an average winter. Alistair Kite is MD and joint founder of the company and he explained to me the importance of winter maintenance and also what it entails. The risks that businesses face by not having a winter risk management strategy in place are that there are accidents on site, the cost involved in managing those accidents can be enormous, the reputational loss that clients potentially suffer if they are seen by their staff or their customers to frankly not be caring about their safety while they're on site is increasingly important and businesses I think in the main are much more aware of that these days. And there is also the threat or the risk that budgets are not protected if there is not a cohesive strategy in place to deal with it. Now it's a seasonal business, you have many different contracted workers operating across the country. How do you ensure quality of service? The most important element is having the right people and recruiting those people is, 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 is quite a skill, frankly. It takes somebody pretty special uh, to, to be out at three o'clock in the morning shoveling snow when the rest of the world is comfortable in bed, but that's, that's fundamental to the success of our business. Every single one of our people, be they the most recently recruited operator, right down to the board members, are passionate about what they do. You also have operational systems which have won awards, which feed in the weather reports live and all this sort of thing. We have a, a totally live view about what is happening anywhere in the country on any one of our customers' sites. Our operators' vehicles are tracked and they're reporting of conditions on site and the service that they've carried out on each and every site is fed live into our operating room. We also have 
weather updates, live weather updates being fed to us by our, by our, our weather provider. We have satellite imagery that will tell us to the, to the 10 or 15 minute span when it is that snow is going to stop. It's operationally critical. Now cost control is key to all of your clients. How do you ensure that it doesn't spiral out of control? We work very hard with our clients to make sure that uh, we are providing them with the most cost-effective solution to achieve what they're looking to achieve. Protecting yourselves against a hard winter um, doesn't necessarily mean that the bills are going to be huge if you have chosen to select the right package. We very recently refunded £122,000 to a, to a good customer of ours who'd selected a package that made that possible. Now what's the biggest challenge that winter maintenance companies and their clients face? The cost of claims for injury arising from slips and trips, snow related, have risen by 26% in the last three years. That's clearly of concern. But there are opportunities. We provide the solution for customers to be able to to, to deal with that challenge. The biggest remaining challenge, I would say, is around dealing with snow. It can be very taxing, and it has been a challenge for companies in our space for a long time. We, unlike any other that I know, have the ability, operating from our 92 depots across the UK, to be where we need, with our own equipment, to deal with snow wherever it is. Now when and how can BIFM and FMA members and FM end users take advantage of winter maintenance schemes? The message that I would want to send to everybody is, is to act while the sun shines, or in fact probably before the sun even shines. This is a business which depends on an enormous amount of planning and preparation when dealing with it on the scale that we do and we deliver with excellent results uh, to all of our customers who we survey annually. Uh, the most recent survey showed a customer satisfaction rating of 99.2%. We're, we're working on the 0.8. Um, but customers do need to come to us early in order to be able to be fitted in uh, in a way that means that we can deliver the very best to them. Facilities management is really important when you're looking at compliance of a building, so reducing your risk as far as legislation is concerned. Compliance is one of the massive pieces about facilities management. They, they have to know what the changes are, what's happening in the marketplace, what's the latest government view, because the government view is also changing all the time. So these guys know and can make sure that you're being compliant, especially if you've outsourced your facilities management function, they'll have whole teams of people that can make sure that you stay compliant. FMs need to know as much as they can about companies they're thinking of partnering with before they sign on the dotted line, what other clients have been saying about them, what their past performance has been, and so on. Altius is a specialist company which provides clients with an independent assessment of potential vendors' compliance with specific requirements, their capabilities and their performance. With their client partner SGP, Altius has recently won the BIFM's Innovation in Systems Award for their groundbreaking software. Gary Plant, the MD, told me more. We do assessments of suppliers and contractors and consultants. We use vendor as a shorthand really to cover all, all of those. Uh, we are also really 50% an IT company, so we, we create technology to help us do what is a traditional process. Now, how do you think that independent assessors like yourselves provide extra value for money? Many clients do assessments themselves. I wouldn't say they're all bad, but it's not their core business. They don't necessarily do uh, the things that they probably should because they're doing it less frequently. Independent assessors, of course, what they can do is they're doing it every day. They can go through the information, they can check it, they're used to seeing it, they can apply consistent standards and they can always make sure that the, the vendor gets independent advice if, if they're not really up to the scratch. Now what would typically sit within a vendor assessment package? Typically vendor assessment packages focus on health and safety. What we found however through experience is that clients need more than that. They need to know that the company is commercially sound, they need to know its legal standing is okay, they need to know its insurances are for the actual company that we're looking at. 
they need to know in some cases whether they're environmentally friendly and they've got good CSR policies and procedures. Is their customer service up to scratch? There are quite a few things that the client might have on their agenda that a typical health and safety assessment probably wouldn't cover. Now how can BIFM and FMA members and FM end users take advantage of a vendor assessment package? Have you got a case study? It's a company called SGP Property and Facility Management. We've assessed for them all of their vendors and now they have a lot of assurance in their supply chain. The so vendors that we've assessed, we have lots of, lots of information about those vendors now and that is readily available for the next client. So should another FM client come along, they can use the information that we've already got in their assessment. The vendor doesn't have to pay again, the vendor doesn't have to provide the information again and it's ready to go. Now how do you know that what a supplier is telling you is correct? We devise the question so that when we ask them, it's not easy to know what we're looking for. We basically ask questions about the company and look for various things and look for evidence of various things. Every claim they make has to be backed up by evidence. Now we usually get that from them, but we can get it from a third party as well, such as Companies House or a Dun & Bradstreet equivalent, people like that. Once we've got that evidence, then what we can do is we can do sample checks to make sure that the process is working. So we can go back over the ground and we can check the seat physically to see whether they have answered correctly and honestly and statistically prove it, it works. And how can you ensure that you meet the needs of clients across the whole supply chain? Every client's got different requirements. Suppliers do different things. Uh, within the things that they provide, they'll do different activities. So they might maintain it, they might design it, they might manufacture it. And all of these complications can be quite difficult to interpret and do the correct assessment. Our software has been purposely built to handle all of that complexity and make it simple. So we ask the supplier, who do you want to work for? What do you do in some detail? And then on, on, in real time, the software will build the assessment for them and it'll be a perfect match. Now, how easily can clients get information from you? Is, does it take a long process? Is it a long time? Everything that we do uh, is visible to the clients over the internet on a, a dedicated web portal called InTouch. They can use that portal to interrogate it to find information about the vendor and about our assessment of them. They can see every bit of the assessment that we've done. They can also get every bit of evidence that's been supplied by the supplier and they can set up uh, alerts so they could get an email or a text message if something changes. It's okay to look at a supplier's record and say everything's okay but by tomorrow it could have changed. So it's very easy, it's available 24-7 as you would expect. Now tell me about your AIM Hire programme. Assessments usually will establish that a vendor meets a baseline. They meet minimum requirements for the client and for uh, legislative compliance. However, that's great, but if you want a competitive advantage, you really want your supply chain to be better than your competitors. So we can use the AIM Hire programme to develop suppliers, to develop the supply chain and to keep improving, and that's very important to clients. It's about regular meetings, it's about knowing your supplier and your supplier knowing your customer because if you have that really good strong personal relationship when you need to make an extra demand of your supplier you know they'll go that extra mile for you and also measuring it, you want, they want to be meaningful measurements customer service, it really is asking the guys on the ground what the service like that they're receiving because FM really is a service into the business We've heard in this programme from our five showcased companies how really top class facilities management improves efficiency and performance in the workplace, boosts well-being, motivation and morale amongst staff and it shows in the bottom line. In the UK, the FM industry has quietly and almost behind the scenes turned itself into a £120 billion a year industry by some estimates and it's still expanding. It's also become a major creator of value and of jobs. Well that's all we've got time for now but if you'd like to know more about any of the organisations that we've featured in this programme then look at our website thebusinesschannel.tv. Bye bye for now.